Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for our consideration today for this, the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany, is our Old Testament reading for today from Jeremiah chapter 17, those verses which were read just a few moments ago. I would think that most of you would probably agree with me that we are living in difficult times. Economic uncertainty, political unrest, financial hardships, anxiety about health and safety can all magnify the personal turmoil that we may be experiencing. When faced with these challenges, where do you go or what do you do to get through these situations? Whom can you trust to help get you through these difficult times in which we are living? Yourself? Other people? Or is it to the Lord you go for help in times of trouble? You see, there are really only two ways. Either trusting human abilities or trusting the Lord. And to trust in the Lord is better than to trust in human strength. The difference is either a blessing or a curse. There really are only these two ways, trusting in man or trusting in the Lord. The Lord said to his people through the prophet Jeremiah, you are cursed if you do not trust in the Lord, if you only trust in humanity and in human strength and wisdom, and if you turn away from the Lord. Rather, blessed are you when you trust in the Lord and commit your life to Him. Yes, the one who trusts in himself is like a stubby shrub in a desert with no water around, just salt flats for as far as you can see. Nothing good is going to come from that. Certainly no prospering or full abundant growth. Not going to happen. That shrub will eventually wither and die. But in contrast, one who trusts in the Lord and commits his life to the Lord is like a strong green tree that grows and prospers and bears fruit because it has its roots deep down in the life-giving waters. It doesn't worry. It's not afraid if there's a drought. It can weather anything because of the never-failing, ever-flowing stream of life to support it and to see it through. So, in whom do you trust? Is it yourself? Well, you wouldn't be alone if you trusted yourself first and foremost to get yourself through difficult times or any times in this day and age. People say, I'm smart enough. I'm good enough. People like me. I've got enough money. I've got friends. I have my network. I can do just fine. You might say the same thing and be proud of it, but <laughs> what have you forgotten? What's left out of that equation? If these are the things that you trust in, God says, Cursed are you. For one thing, they will all fail you. They won't last forever. They'll die with you. And then what? Will they help you in the life of the world to come? <laughs> no. Remember Jesus said, Seek first the kingdom of God. Not as a last resort, but first Cursed are you. Not only will they fail you, but you also have not turned to the Lord, who, after all, made all of heaven and earth. Turning from the Lord means we have despised and neglected the Lord. We have sought help only in ourselves. Will that be enough on the last day? When we stand before the Lord, who will our help be? Ourselves? The prophet says, cursed is the man who trusts in man. 
But in contrast, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. For the Lord is the only one who is able to prosper and to protect you. He is the one who will give you full life now and eternally. Not only will all others disappoint and fail you, but your trusting of others and your turning to others is really turning from the Lord. Trusting the Lord is like being planted by an ever-flowing river of water, like a palm tree next to the Nile River in Egypt. I think it's interesting that the ancient Greek historian Herodotus once said of Egypt that it was the gift of the Nile. And what he meant by that is that without the Nile, there would be no pyramids, no tombs, no treasures, no temples, no pharaohs like Ramses or Tutankhamun. Egypt would be like any other place in the Sahara Desert of northern Africa. But since the Nile River flows year-round, and since Egypt is not dependent on rain, droughts are not an issue in Egypt. The Nile flooded every year from the snow melts thousands of miles upstream in the highlands of Ethiopia and Uganda. And those floods deposited silt to enrich the very soil of Egypt. But if you go just a mile away from the Nile, beyond the reach of the floods or of irrigation, the desert and the brown sand are immediate. Now, where would you like to plant your crop? In the desert or by the Nile? The answer is obvious. So it's likewise obvious whether we should trust in the desert of our own strength or trust in the Lord who waters us that we may prosper and grow in his green pastures. As I asked the kids just a few moments ago, do you like growing plants? Don't give me a plant. Plants come to my house to die. Okay, I have no green thumb. But if you like to grow plants, inside or outside, plants need water. If your plants don't get water, they'll die. Inside, you must water your plants yourself. Outside, it may rain and water your plants. Or it may not, or they'll shrivel and die unless they have another source of water, like deep roots or a nearby stream or a pond. One year, a person went on a 10-day summer vacation and forgot to water their inside and their porch plants because they didn't get any water and were shielded from the sun. Guess what happened? The inside plants were completely withered as well as the porch plants. But the trees outside were still beautifully green because they had deep roots and could weather the lack of rain and the lack of watering, reaching down to those hidden sources of moisture. So it is with the person who trusts in the Lord, rather than depending on human strength or human memory, to water their plants. We can weather the droughts of this life and still thrive, because God will not fail us, but instead will provide for and nourish us. So I ask you again, who do you trust? You say, the Lord, but do you? You might say, well, mm, not all, not at first. But if all else fails, I've got the Lord to fall back on. Huh, think about that for a minute. You wouldn't like to be anyone's second or third or last choice, would you? How do you think that attitude reflects on your trust in the Lord. God rightly judges those who trust in themselves, and he's right to condemn them. We deserve what we would get. We deserve to be parched. We deserve to wither and to die because we have not trusted God, who says, come to me, and I will give you rest. I will give you life. 
Yes, we have failed to trust in the Lord. We have failed to seek Him first. But there is one who did all things well, who trusts in the Lord with all his heart, all his soul, and all his mind. That is our Lord Jesus. He trusted his heavenly Father with his whole life. In the temptation in the wilderness, Jesus trusted the word of the Lord to take care of him and his life. And when he died on that cross, parched and thirsty, not because of any sin in him, but rather for us and our salvation, Jesus still said, even then, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. As Jesus suffered on that cross, all the curses that we deserve, and in their place gives us all the blessings we have not earned. He poured out his life so that we might have life from him, from his body, and from his blood. When Jesus rose from the dead, he breathed the Holy Spirit on his disciples, empowering them to now preach the good news of forgiveness of sins. So, repent. Repent of your sin of not trusting in the Lord and trusting in yourself. Believe the incredibly wonderful good news that your sin, even your sin of mistrust and lack of trust and trust in yourself, is forgiven. It's been paid for on that cross by Jesus. Know that life, true life, never failing, comes from God. Stay connected to him, for he is your very life and salvation. And he will prosper your life and your growth for his purposes. He will lead you to those streams of living water and green pastures in the house of the Lord forever. Blessed is the man, Jesus, who trusted in the Lord. Blessed are you who trust in the Lord Jesus. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.